Hello, today we're going to look at Planck units. When we measure things, we use three very basic measure types. We think of mass, which in SI units is measured in kilograms, and we think of length, which in SI units is measured in metres, and we think of time, which in SI units is measured in seconds. Now, the important thing about mass, length and time is that the kilogram, the metre and the second have nothing special about them. Sometime in history, somebody decided that a certain mass of material was deemed to weigh a kilogram. And somebody decided that a certain length, maybe the length of a man's arm, was defined as being a metre. And somebody defined some sort of unit of time on a clock as equaling one second. These units were simply historically derived. Somebody decided that that particular unit fitted the mass or the length or the time. And the question we're going to ask today is, is there any fundamental measure of these units that doesn't require some kind of historical perspective, something that humans have done in the past? Well, if there is, we need to relate it to things that are constant throughout the universe. What do we know that is constant throughout the universe? Well, we think we know three fundamental constants. That is the gravitational constant, Planck's constant, which is uh, Planck's reduced constant, that equals h over 2 pi, and c, the speed of light. What are the known values for these constants? Well, g is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared kilogram to the minus 2. h bar is very approximately 10 to the minus 34 joule second. And C is about 3 times 10 to the 8th metres per second. But of course these three terms are all expressed in terms of values that have been historically derived by some arbitrary means in the past. Is, the way, is there a way of expressing them uh, in terms of units which are fundamental? Well, there could be. If we could express mass as some function of g and h bar and c, then that would be fundamental because g, h bar and c are fundamental constants which apply throughout the universe. And if we could do the same thing for length and for time, that would be great. Well, let's see if we can do it. And to start with, we have to ask, what are the dimensions of G, H bar and C? Let's start with the gravitational constant G. Now we know that the force between two masses is given by G times M1 times M2, that's the masses of the two bodies, divided by R squared, the distance between them. And that means that G, if we rearrange this equation, we get that G equals force times R squared divided by M1, M2. Now the question is, what are the dimensions of G? Well, the dimensions of G are simply going to be given by the dimensions of each of these quantities. Well, what's that? Well, force is mass times acceleration. R squared is simply a length squared term. And the masses are two mass terms, m squared. Acceleration, of course, is simply length divided by time squared. It's meters per second per second. And so you can write that the dimensions of g, which we often do by putting g in square brackets, 
R mass times L over T squared times L squared divided by M squared. And cancelling out this M for one here, you get that that is L cubed over T squared M. So what we are saying is that the dimensions of the gravitational constant G are represented by an L cubed, a length cubed time term, divided by time squared multiplied by a mass. Those are the dimensions. Now let's think about the speed of light C. That's actually very simple. C is measured, as it is a velocity, in terms of meters per second. And dimensionally, that is simply a length divided by a time. So that one was very easy. What about h bar, Planck's constant? What are the dimensions for that? Well, think about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. That says that delta x, which is the uncertainty in position or length, multiplied by the uncertainty in momentum has got to be of the order of h bar. Well, what are the dimensions of delta x and delta p? Well, delta x, of course, is simply a length term. Momentum is mass times velocity. But what is velocity? Velocity is just length divided by time. And so now we have that the dimensions of h bar are given by length times mass times length over time, which is L squared m over t. And those are the dimensions of h bar. So let's just remind ourselves where we got to. The gravitational constant g has dimensions L cubed divided by t squared m. The speed of light c has dimensions L divided by t. And Planck's constant has dimensions L squared m divided by t.